Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. You know what? This is Bible study night. I so look forward to it. I love getting into the word of God, and I love it because you're there. And when I have those around me that just, you know, just want to get into a study of the word and to receive and learn, Oh, I tell you, it energizes me. And that's what you do. I can sense your presence and I can also sense your hunger and your thirst for the knowledge of the word of God. I thank God for you being there. And I don't take it for granted. I thank God that you are there. Tonight, I want to talk about beyond the usual. Because the hour that we're in, God is doing things that they're beyond the usual of what ordinarily has happened in the past. It's so much going on in this hour, so much taking place, and a lot of people are expecting God to move like this because he moved this way before and putting God in a box, and God cannot be placed in a box. You just got to know he's going to move and let him move, but I have a word for you tonight saying God's going to move for you, and it's going to be beyond the usual. Beyond the usual is how God is moving in this hour. Trials are coming up on God's people, and I mean the pressures of life, but God is moving in such a way that it is blowing the minds of those that would dare to believe him. And tonight, beyond the usual, we're going to be looking in, well, we're going to look in 2 Kings. We're also going to look into Joel and Malachi. So get your Bibles, get your devices, get ready because we're going to delve into the word of God. Whenever I bring a topic, you know, where I'm bringing it from, the word of God. Because when God gives us his word concerning a specific or topic or issue or whatever you're talking about, whatever you're going through, when God gives his word, you come up to it. You can't bring the word down to you. We must go up to the word. So I know this is going to expand your capacity on tonight beyond the usual. That's the hour that we are in. So many people are getting stuck and coming out of the um, pandemic. They're getting stuck because it's no going back. Things are not the same. There's no returning to what was normal. Uh -uh. Everything, there is a new normal. So we're going to talk tonight about going beyond the usual. Let's start first in 2 Kings. I want to look at that and this is a story about Naaman, you know, because God is doing unusual things in this hour in the lives of those who would dare to believe him. Yes, unusual manifestations, unusual ways that he's bringing about the promise in your life. And therefore, you cannot limit God to move in the ways that you've already seen him move. You cannot do that. You got to take the limits off of God. You can't limit him by what you think that he can do uh huh, because of something that you've seen him do before. You cannot limit God that way and how God has moved in the past. In essence, you know, your limited thinking will begin to uh, put God in a box. And God cannot be placed in a box. You might as well just put the top on that box and just sit it to the side because God can't be placed in a box, all right? So you got to get God out of the box and allow him to move beyond the usual ways that you expect him to move, all right? Why? Because he's already promised to demonstrate marvels and wonders and extraordinary manifestations of his greatness in your life. He's already promised that. Glory to God. So you can expect to get God out of the box and come on out of loader bar because he didn't move. In. Yeah, God's ready to move for you. Get him out of the box. He's moving beyond the usual ways. And you can learn a lesson from the story of Naaman, which we're going to talk about. I'm going to go into a couple other scriptures tonight as well and bringing it from the word of God. He was a commander in the army of the king of Syria and he came down with leprosy. And you know, leprosy, oh, that's something you'd have to be cast out and put in a leper colony and you could not even be around the, the, the people and everything. And he was a commander in the king's army. Okay, he was a mighty man of valor. That's what the Bible says. But he was an honorable man, but he was a leper. Ugh, but, and there can be so many great things going on in your life. Things are happening. And then you can say, but, what is that? What is that? But, okay. And, and, and because God's been moving, God's been moving. And then, but, mm -hmm, God's going to move beyond the usual way. Mm, get him out the box now. Oh, glory to God. And so what happened when the prophet Elijah 
was there in that area. And when Naaman had heard that the prophet Elijah could heal, the king of Assyria sent a letter and everything to Elijah, and uh, the king of, uh, of of where Elijah was. And he sent a letter to the, to the king. And Naaman went to see him, okay, uh, went to see Elijah. Because the word had gone out that Elijah was healing, delivering, setting people free. Miraculous things were happening. Oh, yes, great and mighty. Lay hands on them and, oh, they'd be healed of all manner of diseases. So a letter was sent. And so Naaman went to see the prophet Elijah. Because surely, oh, yes, great great testimonies of things that had been done. So let's look in 2 Kings 5, verses 9 through 14. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, wave his hand over all this leprosy on me and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and Farpa, those are rivers there, the rivers of Damascus better than the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? Where he had told him to go and wash, the waters were dirty. Uh, uh, get God out the box. He knows what he's doing now. So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would not you have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean. So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. <laughs> See, you can't put God in a box. You cannot Limit God by what you know and how you know he has moved. God has many ways to move, to bless you, to heal you, to deliver you. See, Naaman had already made up his mind about how God was going to heal him. He'd already decided. And as a result, he, he had limited human thinking. Is your thinking limited? Is your human thinking limited? Hmm. Beyond usual. And so Naaman, he was walking away without the miracle that he needed because of his limited thinking. Don't walk away from your miracle. Do not put God in a box. God is going beyond the usual in this hour in order to bring you that that you're believing him to do, that that he promised in his word to do. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When when Elisha sent the messenger, oh my God, that messenger had the word from Elisha. That word was just as anointed as, as if he had laid hands upon Naaman. But God didn't move the servant that way. Oh, let me tell you, when God began to move and God tell you what to do, you can send somebody. Oh, and I tell you, they go in the power of your spirit and your anointing and the deliverance comes to pass. Do not put God in a box. Do not limit him by your human thinking. Don't walk away from your miracle. <laughs> Had not his servants begin to speak words of wisdom to him, his healing would not have manifested. Had not they spoken and said, you know what? Oh, my God. What if? What? Just because if the prophet told you to do something great, would you have not done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? Oh, my God. How much more? Can't you do that? Just, just do it. Just do it. Think outside the box. Just do it. God's getting ready to do something beyond usual for you. Just do it. Oh, Quit figuring out how you figure this thing is going to come out. Come out of your human thinking. Uh, his servant speaking a word. Oh, my God. And so he went, did it, 
And oh my God, it was so wondrous. It was so marvelous. It says right here, it said that God moved so in fulfilling those, those instructions that, that, that the man of God, the servant of the Lord had given unto his servant to go. Oh my God, sent a message by a messenger. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Beyond usual that God was moving for him. God was doing great and mighty things in his life. Don't you miss God's wonder in your life. There's a wonder that God's getting ready to do. Ooh, I found that many times, just like Naaman, many believers, they want to think that surely God's going to answer my prayer this way or surely God's going to answer my prayer in a certain way that they come up with. Surely God's going to bring success to my household with the way you come up with. Surely God's going to move my children in the direction of greatness in the way you come up with. Surely I'm going to get this corner office on my job in the way that you come up with. Mm. God doesn't need your help. Not one bit. God was fulfilling his covenant of wonders long before you were ever born. You and I, <laughs> long before that. Oh, glory to God! And I know that if if you if you could have made something happen, you would have you would have done it by now, wouldn't you? I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you can't. This is beyond you. So let God do something beyond the usual in your life. Your job is just to trust and obey God's instructions. That's what you can, you're supposed to do. It's God's job to deliver on his promise. He'll do it any way he wants to do it. God is moving beyond usual ways in this hour. Oh, move your human thinking out of the equation and let God be God. Now go to Joel 2 and 20. Joel 2 and 20. God said, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Oh my God. God said, I will show wonders in the heavens. And from the days of Moses to the days of Joel, my God, God spoke about doing wonders. His covenant has not ceased. I love that. Then when God shows a wonder, we see things occur that are beyond the usual. Notice that? When he show up, beyond the usual, how he moved. Oh. In this hour, you're having things being done for you that's never been done before. Why? Because Satan is moving in ways that's never he's never moved before. And then there's some things that he has done, but it's never happened in your house. It's never happened in your finances. It's never happened in your world before. Mm. Oh, my, 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 my. Whew. I tell you one thing. God is moving beyond the usual for you. Now, let me define a wonder as something Unfamiliar. That's the way I look at it. Something unfamiliar, unexplainable, and could only happen by the hand of God. That that that's a wonder. That's a wonder to me. You see, and God has shown his wonders to me many times. I mean many, many, many times throughout my ministry. Oh, glory to God. And and I, I couldn't I could never explain what he did. I just know God did it. <laughs> Amen. He did it. Oh, glory to God. And when God begins to move and God begins to do things for you, you can't explain it. You just say, God did it. That's a wonder. Inexplicable. That's a wonder. That's a wonderful. You know, God is forever the God of wonders. He's forever doing some great things because he's moving beyond the usual for your life. God spoke through the prophet Malachi. Get to Malachi now. We're going there. I gave you that in Malachi. I'm going to add a couple of scriptures on there too. But let's go to Malachi 3 and 6. He said, for I am the Lord. I do not change. Oh, glory to God. God is saying, if I said I'm going to do it, I'm going to bring it to pass. Don't put me in a box. Don't use your human thinking. If the anointed, see, God will use his anointed to speak a word. And that word, let me tell you, a messenger may bring it. That's why that that delivers you. If you share that testimony with somebody and they believe and receive it, God will go beyond the usual for their lives as well. That anointed word, God said, I will not change. If I spoke it, I'm going to perform it and bring it to pass. Then the psalmist affirmed him as the God of wonders in Psalms 96 when he said, now he penned these words, declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all people. Ooh, 
glory to God. Speak it. Declare his glory. Declare it. Mm, God is so good. Then I love Psalms 136. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords for his mercy endures forever to him who alone does great wonders. Oh, let me tell you, God is moving beyond the usual. You hear me say he's moving. Hear me well, beyond the usual for you. Mm, in the New Testament, we find this account of the day of Pentecost. After the 120 were filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, this is an Acts 2. Peter stood up and said, verses 18 and 19, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit, hallelujah, in those days and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above. That's declaring it. That's declaring it. They shall prophesy. It's not talking about the office of a prophet. It's talking about you declaring what God says. Who clearly God's covenant of wonders did not end with Moses. Clearly his covenant of wonders did not end with Joel. And even on the day of Pentecost, no, God is forever the God of wonders. He's the God of wonders on today, keeping covenant with those of every generation who choose to believe. I believe God. Oh, he's a God of wonders. Oh, he's moving beyond the usual today in great and mighty ways. Got another scripture I want to share with you before closing out. Uh, I'm going to do a couple more. Is that all right with you? Let's look at Acts 5. Yes. want to look at a few verses there, starting around verse 12, then jump to verse 14 through 16. And through the hands of the apostles, I want you to see how God accounts, his account of wonders are shown in the Bible, through the hands of apostles, as God formed the early church. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all in one accord in Solomon's porch. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least a shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also, a great multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented uh, by unclean spirits. And they were all healed. I love that word, A-L-L. -L. All healed. They, you know what that lets me know? Everybody that showed up believed. When you believe, all, a multitude of people. Many who were sick, many who were tormented by unclean spirits, all were healed. Ooh, wonder beyond the usual. Even those who were merely, merely exposed to Peter's shadow, if his shadow passed them, ooh, my God, they were all healed. My God. And the book of Acts goes on to say, and Stephen, full of Faith and power in Acts 6 and 8 did great wonders and signs among the people. Mm. Speaking of the things that happened to him mm -hmm. in his own ministry, the apostle said, In mighty signs, you see, and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about to Lyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Talking about wonders. Woo. Speaking of the things that happened to him as he went forth to do what God would have him to do. How God moved in wondrous ways. He moved beyond the usual. He moved beyond the meat. You know when the snake came up out of the fire wrapped itself, attached itself to Paul. Paul shook it off. Didn't harm it. They were waiting. The barbarians in the area, they were waiting for 
some signs to show that he was going to die with swelling up and, oh my goodness, and dying, and it didn't happen. The signs and the unusual things. Oh yes, snake, when it bites you, you don't get a tick. Oh yeah, that poison gets in your bloodstream and you're gone. But no, it did not happen to him. He shook it off. And it lets you know, torment, unclean spirits, those things. Oh, oh, God will move beyond the usual, beyond what the nature says should take place, beyond what the enemy has tried to do to bring you down. God will lift you up beyond that that the enemy says, there's no way you're coming out of this and God brings you out. Ah, beyond the usual, God is moving just as he moves. Yesterday, he's the same yesterday and today. God said, I'll never change. So the miracles didn't end with Moses. Oh, the wonders did not stop. Oh, whoa, whoa. They did not stop with Joel. And they didn't stop on the day of Pentecost. God's wonders are still down here on this earth. The greatness of God. Oh, and he's moving beyond the usual for you. All you got to do is to take God out of the box. Remove your human thinking as to how you think God's going to do it and just obey his instructions. Do what God said, do, and watch God move beyond the usual in your life. <laughs> Come on, give God some glory. Come on, give him some praise. He's truly worthy of all the praise. <laughs> oh, I love the Lord on tonight. It's time to give. It's time to release unto the Lord that that God would have you to do, not out of compulsion or pressure, but simply by obedience. God is a wonder working God, moving beyond the usual for you. God is so good. And he's truly worthy to be praised. I thank God for you. I thank God for what he's doing in your life. I tell you right now, he is moving miraculously. He is moving in ways unknown. He is moving in wondrous things for you and manifesting in your life. All you got to do is believe him. Oh, yes. And then, you know, on the end there, I brought it about, yes, go on and give, obey God. About about Paul. God will use those that he have anointed. Glory to God. That you'll see the signs and the wonder. See, you that that's how you can identify. When you see signs and wonders around a person's life, those things that God's speaking, bringing it to pass, ah, that's the ground you want to plant in. That's where you want to connect up to. Oh, you find out that everything that connected to Elisha won. Everything that connected to Paul won. Everything that's connected to me wins. Oh, you connect up with an anointed vessel of God. And everything that happens will be beyond the usual in your life. Ha! God bless you and I love you.